Hello and welcome to another video on soundproofing, or if you're listening on our podcast, thanks for checking in. Today we're going to talk about one of the, the most exciting aspects of soundproofing, which is humidity control in your studio. Yeah, I'm totally joking, but it, this is an important part, especially for those of us in the more southern humid climates like Nashville, where humidity can be a big problem in the summer months, and actually it can get a little too dry in your studio in the winter months. So having control over humidity in your room is important. It also is a problem if you have mold growth and things like that. So definitely don't want any of that in your studio. So in this video today, we're going to talk about some really uh, kind of nerdy stuff, but hopefully it'll open your eyes to understanding what relative humidity is, understanding like how to size your HVAC system, how mini splits work, how an ERV or fresh air system contributes to humidity and how we can mitigate that and how humidity works in general with HVAC systems. So let's dive in. Before we do that, I have a free resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. It'll go through all the aspects of soundproofing so you will get a general overview of how to design and build your own soundproof home recording studio. To check that out, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's dive into this lesson on how to control humidity in your home recording studio. <laughs> Okay, the first thing we need to ask ourselves is what is the ideal relative humidity? And the answer is a little bit contentious on the internet in some books that I've read, but in general, I would say it's safe to say that between 30 and 50% relative humidity is ideal for both comfort and for safety so you don't get mold growth or water running down the walls. Now, you may be wondering, what in the world is that relative all about in relative humidity? Why can't we just say humidity? And the answer is actually kind of an interesting scientific uh, reason that you may have learned about in high school, but to be honest, I kind of didn't understand this until I did some research on it. But basically, humidity is the amount of moisture in the air. And the amount of moisture in the air is constant, but the amount of moisture the air can hold changes depending on the temperature and the pressure of air in the room or in the atmosphere. So this said, what that means is that the amount of water vapor the air can hold at any one time is relative to the temperature and pressure of the air. So that's why it's relative humidity. That might still be a little confusing, but a interesting way to think about this is that if you were to blow up a balloon, you would be putting air from your lungs into the balloon, but you're also gonna be putting in some delicious water vapor from your mouth and lungs as well. Now, if you take that balloon and you put it in the freezer, you might find that when you open it up in an hour or two, the balloon has shrunk in size. This is due to the fact that the temperature of the air molecules inside the balloon have changed in temperature, slowed down actually, if we're getting into the physics of it. And this creates a shrinking of volume in the amount of air in the balloon. What did not change was the amount of water vapor particles that went into that balloon. So the relative humidity of the balloon when it was fully blown up, there was more volume and the same amount of water, which means that the humidity was gonna be less because there's more water vapor relative to the air in the balloon. Now, once the air has slowed down and gotten colder, now suddenly there is more water vapor relative to the volume of the balloon. Therefore, the relative humidity goes up because relative to the amount of air to the amount of water vapor has increased. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense and hopefully I explained it slightly okay. But anyways, understanding this concept is important, not vital. So the next question we ask is where does humidity come from? Now, in most houses, in most home studios uh, that aren't airtight, the humidity is going to come from just air seeping in from the outside. If the humid air is outside and it's really wet and nasty out there, then that humidity can transfer into your room. And then also just exhaling, having humans, especially like drumming. If you have five people in a room, it's going to be more humid than if you just had one person exhaling that humid, nice, moist air from your lungs. Uh, the other thing is when we have a soundproof room, uh, I always recommend having some sort of fresh air exchange. And this could mean having an ERV, energy recovery ventilator, 
or an HRV, heat recovery ventilator. Either way, it's going to be pulling that hot, sticky, humid air from the outside in the summer. And it's going to do a pretty good job, especially with an ERV, of mixing that hot, sticky air with some of the already nice, drier air in your room. But it's not perfect. You're still going to get some humid air coming in your room. So that leads to humidity problems as well, which is something we need to address in our home recording studio design. Okay, okay, you're like, Wilson, how do we fix this? I don't care about the science and where it all comes from. And the answer is there's a couple solutions. The first one is going to be understanding these two different aspects of your HVAC system, which are the sensible cooling load and the latent cooling load. The sensible cooling load is a measurement that describes how efficient or how good is your machine at cooling the air in your home recording studio or house. The latent cooling load is the ability of the unit to remove moisture from the air in your studio or house. And you want these sensible and latent cooling loads to be calculated to the volume of space in your house or studio and the number of people that will be interacting in that space to account for the amount of humidity that will be in there. The reason I'm mentioning all this is not that I'm going to teach you how to calculate that because I honestly don't really know, but you can hire someone like an HVAC specialist who does or a contractor who knows this stuff. The problem is that you want to ask your HVAC tech or contractor, say, hey, like we need to make sure that the relative humidity in my studio is between 30 and 50 percent. Have you calculated that? Are you sure you know how to do that? Uh, and just get a good answer from them. And what you can do is make sure that they don't oversize your unit. And this is what happens in a lot of homes across the country is that they put in, they need a 3.5 ton unit, but they put in a four ton unit. And what happens is that the unit, sure, it can like cool the home really fast, but it doesn't allow the unit to have a long runtime. Now, the reason the runtime of the unit, like it kicks on, it starts cooling your home and then it's like, okay, I cooled the home really quickly. Now I'm gonna turn the unit, off. it turns itself off. But you don't want that. You actually want a unit that runs pretty much consistently and doesn't need to constantly reboot itself, turn it off, reboot, turn it off to get the home at the right temperature. So the reason all that matters is that when a HVAC system doesn't run long enough, the coils in the system cannot reach the dew point and therefore the air passing over the coils will not condensate and drip into the drip pan, which leads to removing the moisture from the air. Also, when the HVAC system does not run long enough, it doesn't get the full air exchange of the room. Therefore, you're not actually passing all the air in your room through the coils, over the coils. Therefore, not all the moisture can be removed because not all the air is being passed over the coils. Pretty simple. So that is, in a nutshell, why your system should not be oversized or undersized, but oversizing is a main issue with most HVAC and contractor installers who don't really know what they're doing. So just be aware of that. Ask them about it, make sure like, make sure this isn't oversized, right? Like we wanna make sure this is the right size unit for the square footage of our house or studio. So you might be wondering, what about mini splits? I'm a big fan of mini splits. I'm a big fan of the mini split and the ERV combination to bring in fresh air and also provide you with heating and cooling needs. But this system is not 100% perfect. Uh, you can put on a dry mode with the Mr. Cool mini split that I have, which will help a little bit with keeping the moisture down. But when you're running your ERV in the wettest days of summer, you're still probably gonna have a little bit too much moisture coming in through your system into the room from the outside. And that's where having honestly just a dehumidifier in your studio, if you really need to reduce the humidity, um, you can run that when you're not recording, you can run it at night when you're not recording, and it will just collect the moisture in the room, which will bring that relative humidity down. So that is maybe not ideal, but it is a possibility. The other thing I'll talk about briefly is this idea that is mentioned in Roger Weiss's book. Uh, and it's this idea of an air exchange room, which I think is, is actually a great design. It does mean you need a separate room uh, that will have both 
heating and cooling coming in either with a through the window air conditioner or a mini split or part of your HVAC system in your house heating and cooling and you would have some sort of fresh air exchange either through an ERV or HRV and that room will have fresh air and it will also have heated or cooled air and then you can then take the air from that exchange room send it through a baffle box and into your studio. And you can also have another baffle box taking stale air out and sending it to the outside. These are all possibilities and that would lead to the, you could also put a dehumidifier in that room or a humidifier depending on the season and get the air just where you want it. Now for some of you that might be overkill, for me personally I think it's overkill, but it is a solution to having a perfectly a uh, climate controlled room that you then just send the air into your studio and suck the stale air out. And then your studio itself doesn't have any of the noise or mechanics of actually your climate control system. So let's do a quick conclusion of everything we learned because this was a lot of information in one little video. First off, the ideal relative humidity is between 30 and 50%. Yes, you can fudge it a little bit here or there, but that perfect sort of comfort is gonna be in that 30 to 50% range. It's also good for your instruments. Second, you wanna make sure you properly size your HVAC system for the square footage of your house and the amount of people exhaling in your house. This will help make sure that your unit is removing the right amount of moisture from the air and is not short-circuiting itself by just turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off constantly and never fully running. Lastly, as a cherry on top, always buy a dehumidifier off Amazon or wherever and try to find the quietest one you can get and have it run in your room or an exchange room where it will remove excess moisture in your studio. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it made you more aware of the wonderfully interesting topic of humidity in your soundproof home recording studio. However, I do think it is an important thing to think about when you are designing your studio. Again, if you're on that path of designing your soundproof home recording studio, definitely check out my free soundproofing workshop at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all next week and have a wonderful week and good luck with that soundproofing journey.